Good morning and welcome to Bridgewood Online. I'm Pastor Sean and it's great to have each and every one of you tuning in this morning from wherever you're at. You know, Pastor Kurt is coming in just a couple moments to continue his series entitled Follow. If you've missed any one of these messages, you can go back on our Facebook page or... Good morning, Bridgewood. How are you? Come on, that's all right. You can clap today. Welcome. We are so glad that you're here with us. And uh, let me do this. Let me welcome those of you that may be here for the very first time, as well as all of those that are watching online. Come on, Bridgewood. Help me welcome those that are here. That is so great to have you. Thank you so much. Listen, right in the seat back in front of you is a connection card. We promise not to bug you or anything like that, but we would really love to connect with you, and so that's a safe way to be able to do that. You could fill that out, drop it at the boxes at the exits on your way out of the auditorium today. We look forward to, uh, to just saying hello to you. We'll be also out there by the orange banners, and so come by and, and say hello to us uh, if you would. And, and listen, if you're new, can I just invite you next week to Next Steps? Uh, next Steps is kind of the on-ramp here to Bridgewood Church, really helps you understand in two weeks what our vision and our mission is and how you can partner with us, how you can be involved in the mission and Bridgewood, uh, in the mission and vision of Bridgewood. Like, we don't want you just to attend, but we want you to belong. We want you to feel like this is your church and that you could be actively involved in the mission that God has given us here And so next week, during the 1130 experience, so like you can come to this one and then just stay right after for 45 minutes to an hour, and that will just really help you understand. We've got a great group of people that are already signed up for that, and so you can go online and you can sign up for that as well. So a lot of things happening. So we're in this series called Follow, and we've been looking at what does it really mean to follow Jesus, especially in the 21st century. Like, what does that look like, and how do we do that? I think there are a lot of fans of Jesus, but I'm not really sure that there are a lot of followers. And so we're kind of taking a tour through the Gospels and looking at every place where Jesus said, follow me, and what did that mean, and what did that look like? And so we began this series by saying this, that following Jesus is not an easy road, but it's the only road worth following. And I kind of feel like today we're going to take a shift. I already told you that this series was going to progressively get more and more challenging. But like today we are making a total shift. I almost feel like kind of I need to be like uh, when you're on an airplane and the pilot comes on. You know what I'm saying when the pilot comes on? Hello, this is your pilot speaking. They always have that real deep voice. And they say, uh, we're about ready to fly into turbulence, so uh, I need you to put your seat all the way up, uh, your tray table's in the up lock position, and put your seatbelt on. I put the, I don't know what it is, um, but every time they tell you that you got to put your seatbelt on, that's when I always got to go to the bathroom. Is anyone else? Like, I'm fine everywhere as soon as they put the seatbelt on, it's like I got to go, right? And and so the pilot's going, listen, we're going to be in some turbulence. Now, I think pilots, they just get bored looking out the windows, and they're just like, we're just, let's just add, is that what they do, Ron? Yeah, that's what I thought. He's a fighter pilot, he flies, and I'm thinking that it's got to get boring after a while, and so it's like, let's just see what this thing can do or whatever. I, that's how I would be, that's why I'm not a pilot, but that's what I would do. And so you know what it's like, you're like going into turbulent, and they're like, man, this is going to be a wild and crazy ride. Like after today, this is going to be a wild and crazy ride. I woke up with, with a feeling inside, in, in my gut, of a little bit of fear. And I don't, I don't fear speaking in front of people, but it wasn't that kind of fear. It was a fear inside that what I'm about to share with you, that there are people that are following that are going to be unfollowed. They're going to unfollow. Like, is that a word, unfollow? I'm not good at English, but... Um, but, but you know what, they're, they're going to they're gonna hear 
what we're saying today. Because listen, I made a commitment as a pastor not to just preach the social gospel, but to preach the Jesus gospel, the gospel in the Bible. And sometimes when you do that, people are like, I've never heard that before because there's not a lot of people preaching the Bible anymore. But when you hear the words of Jesus today about what it means to be a follower of Jesus, I know not only in the first century did people go, okay, this is where I get off, but I know this is what happens in the 21st century. Like people are going to go, all right, you know, the first two weeks were great, man. You had me. But, but, but now I'm not really sure that I want to be a follower of Jesus. That's where we're going today. So, so look at someone around you and say, buckle up. Buckle up, all right? If you have your Bible, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. And uh, we're going to begin reading there. And I don't know about you, but like, have you ever laid awake at night and thought about what you would do in a crisis situation? Like whether you would coward out or be courageous? Does anybody ever do that at all? Like you kind of play some scenarios in your mind. I, I, I've, I've been in some crazy scenarios. I, I, I've, I've been in accidents. I've watched people drive like literally off a, a cliff and like roll their vehicle and had to run down there and try to rescue them. I've been in, in, in a, a shooting or two that have happened where I'm right in the middle and I'm thinking, okay, what do you do in this moment? Do you just like run and hide or do you try to help or rescue? Been in a situation, a friend of mine, we were just having lunch together eating and and i remember where we were at we were at lucky's uh, steakhouse in fenton and and i remember what he had he had the 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 steakhouse salad and it's just a salad with you know strips of steak on and i remember we're just having a conversation and the next thing i know he's gagging and, and he's like <clears throat> and he's pointing at me and i'm thinking to myself i've never done the heimlich ever i've seen it but i've never actually done it before and so like, I'm just like, I pop up and I'm like, now the whole restaurant's watching and I like come behind him and I'm like, I really hope this works. And I just got behind him. I went, Hoo! and I mean, it works because man, it just came flying out of his mouth, <laughs> landed right on the table. And I'm like, great. I'm like, I didn't think I could do it. And I mean, wouldn't that be awful to die choking on a piece of sirloin? Like, would that not be the worst? Here lays Kurt. He died on a piece of sirloin. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, those courageous moments of life, like, am I going to coward out or am I going to be courageous? Like, what Jesus is about to share here in Matthew chapter 10 is almost like having the disciples imagine what it's going to be like following Him and whether they're going to coward out or whether they're going to be courageous. And so, to kind of understand Matthew chapter 10, let me just read two verses from Matthew chapter 9, just so that we can get the context of what's going on. Matthew chapter 9 says this, verse 35, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. So Jesus is traveling around the Sea of Galilee where he's been doing most of his ministry. He's doing amazing supernatural things and there are huge crowds that are following Jesus. So when he saw the crowd, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. I want you to notice the worldview of Jesus. When Jesus looked at the world, this is what he saw. He saw people that were harassed and helpless. When you look at the world around you today, what do you see? Like, I see a lot of crazy people. I see a lot of chaos. I see a lot of rebellion that's going on. When Jesus saw the crowd, think of it. He had compassion, and he said, listen, they're helpless and they're harassed. They're like wandering through life just doing their own thing like a sheep would without a shepherd. That's how Jesus saw the crowd. Then he turns to his followers, his disciples, and he says this. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest. So Jesus looks at the world and 
and, and he has compassion and he goes, a lot of these people are harassed and helpless. They're just wandering aimlessly. They could be followers also. And so disciples ask God the Father to send out workers into the world and try to help people become followers. And, and don't you love the cleverness of Jesus? He asked the disciples to pray for something, and then as soon as they get done praying, he goes, okay, now you're the answer. You're the answer to what you just prayed. Because look at verse number 1 of chapter 10. This is where we begin. So it says this, verse number 1, Jesus called his 12 disciples to him, and he gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and heal every disease and sickness. So Jesus kind of gathers around his 12 disciples, and he says to them, I'm going to send you out into the world. Now, how many of you know following Jesus when Jesus is present and he's there is one thing, but following Jesus when he's not there and he's not present is a whole other thing. So what he was saying is up to this point, Jesus has been following with them. Like they've been following Jesus. Jesus has been there. And, and wherever Jesus went, Jesus did everything. The disciples, they just watched. Whenever they got in a jam, Jesus got them out of the jam. Whenever they faced, you know, opposition or whatever the case is, Jesus took care of the problem. So like, these guys are like, okay, this is great. But now Jesus goes, now, guys, I want, I want to send you out into the world, but I'm not going to go with you. You're, you're going to go by yourself. You're going to follow now, but you're going to go off on your own. I'm going to send you out. And notice what Jesus says. This is interesting to me. He says, I'm giving you authority. As a follower of Jesus, you have to know that you have authority. Listen, here's the difference, okay? Authority is permission. That's what authority is. Power is the ability to perform. Like if someone has power to do something, that means they can do it. They have the capability or the ability to perform. But permission is what authority is. Authority gives person that has power permission to be able to do it. So, so there are a lot of people that could come up on this stage right now and perform for you. Like they have the power to do stuff. They could speak, they could sing, they could juggle, they could do all kinds of stuff, right? They have the power to do it. But what they don't have is the permission. So you can have all the power in the world, but if you don't have permission to do something, you're limited. Notice what Jesus is saying here. He says, listen, if you're going to be a follower, I'm giving you authority. That means you have permission. The power's in you. Like what I've been doing, you can do, but, but you need permission. You need permission to go out and be able to do it. And I'm giving you that authority. I'm giving you that permission. You go out and do what you have been watching me do. And so, here's the disciples. Notice in, in verse number two, these are the names of the 12 apostles. Now, apostles and disciples um, it, he's talking about the same group, but they kind of mean something different. Disciple means learner. So, so as a disciple, you would follow a teacher or a rabbi so that you could learn. It was like on-the-job mentoring or coaching. Apostle means sent one. That's what apostle means. It, it means you're being sent out now. You're being commissioned to go and represent the person that you've been following. And so he calls his 12 apostles together, and, and he lists the names. So if you don't know who the 12 were, they're listed there in, in verse number two. And then in verse number three, look what he says. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. So if Jesus is going to send you out, how many of you want to get the instructions? Like, I don't know about you, but like, okay, I'm like paying attention now. If I'm going to be a follower of Jesus, and Jesus says, I'm sending you out but I'm sending you out with a few instructions. This is when I perk up, all right? I'm leaning in now. I'm going, okay, what does it mean to be a follower? So Jesus is going to tell us. Like, he's going, okay, you want to be a follower? He, I'm going to give you some instructions. Here, here's, here's what you need to do. He's really going to give us two key instructions. Two key instructions on what it means to follow Jesus in the 21st century. And so let's look at it. And so here's what he says. He says, do not go among the Gentiles or enter any of the town of the Samaritans. All right, that's interesting because what he's saying is, listen, um, there's a group of people out there. 
Um, I'm going to send someone else to do that, but you first go to the lost people of Israel. Now that was because God had made a covenant and that God is saying there that this is the first priority that I have is that Israel, they would hear and they would know and then the message would spread from there. So he says, listen, I want you to go to the lost sheep of Israel and as you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Then heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. So here's Jesus' first instruction. If you're going to be a follower of mine, here's what Jesus says. Followers freely give. He says, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to send you out into the world. I'm going to send you out and everything that you have received from me, I want you to give to everyone else. Now, how many of you, Jesus has done something for you? Like Jesus healed you. Jesus has delivered you. Jesus has given you forgiveness or grace or mercy. He's looking at the disciples and saying, freely you've received, freely give. I'm sending you out to a broken and a lost world. Listen, being a follower of Jesus isn't just for us. It's not just for you. Being a follower of Jesus isn't, man, I just want this, this assurance that, that I have a relationship with God and that I'm going to heaven. Jesus never walked around in the Gospels and said, follow me so that you'll go to heaven. He, you'll never see that. Now, that doesn't mean that if you follow Jesus, you're not going to heaven. No, but that wasn't the motivation. Jesus didn't walk around, follow me so that you can go to heaven. He never walked around either and said, follow me and I'll make you a good person. You're never ever going to read that. Now, if you follow Jesus, I believe you're going to do good things and you're going to be a good person. But he never walked around and said, just follow me and I'll make you a good dad. No, he walked around and he said to people, follow me, I want you to belong. And, and here's what he says. Whatever you receive from me, I want you to give to others. I want you to be like a conduit. That's what being a follower is. Like, like here's what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying, I want you to be connected and associated with my mission and my cause. That's what being a follower of Jesus is. Okay, let's just translate this to the world we're living in. How many of you know there's a lot of causes that are going on in our world right now? There are a lot of people that are following those causes. And here's why they're following it. Because they believe in the mission and the cause. Whether we agree with it or not, whether you think it's cool or not, or it's destructive or not, doesn't really matter. People are saying, I'm following because of the mission or the cause. They don't need to twist anybody's arm. They just say, here's what we're doing. And if you believe in the mission or the cause, there are people that are following. That's going on all over our world right now. So Jesus is saying this. He goes, listen, if you want to be a follower of mine, here's what being a follower means. It means you believe in my mission and my cause and you want to go out into the world and share that mission and that cause. Following Jesus isn't showing up in a weekend service at Bridgewood Church, sitting in a seat, doing a religious performance for about an hour or so, and then walking out and going, I'm a follower of Jesus. Now, if that's what you thought being a follower of Jesus is, that's why I said we're, we're, it's going to get a little bit turbulent here. Because that's what a lot of people think following Jesus is. I bring my Bible, I sing some songs, I sip some coffee, I give some high fives, and I walk out, I feel good, I feel inspired. Once in a while, I'll even throw something in the offering, I feel like, wow, I just paid for my sins. And that's it, right? That's what a lot of people are doing. You ever read through the Bible and and look at the people in the first century that followed Jesus, and then look at people that are following Jesus in the 21st century, and scratch your head, and go, how come those that follow Jesus in the first century don't look anything like people that follow in the 21st century? Like, Pastor, you changed the service times? I'm not coming anymore. Really? You're going to unfollow because you don't like the time? Oh, someone really rubbed me the wrong way at church, and so I'm, I'm all done. Oh, what do you mean? You mean you want me to volunteer some time? Like I've got to do something? Like I can't just show up 
and watch? You actually want me to do something, right? This is where I get off the bus, right? And, and Jesus is going, listen, listen. Here's what followers do. Followers are going to go out into a broken world, and they have two things that a broken world needs. It's right there in the text. Jesus says, you're, you're going out to lost, broken, hurting people, and you've got two things that they're looking for and that, that they need. They don't know they need them, but I'm sending you out to bring it to them. The first is a message. He says, when you go out, he says, go out and proclaim this message. Go out and proclaim this message. And what was the message? You'll see it. It'll come up here in a second. What is the message? He says, as you go proclaim the message, the kingdom of heaven has come near. The kingdom of heaven has come near. He goes, go out and tell everybody. Go out and tell them that the kingdom of God has come near. That means Jesus has come to you. He didn't wait for you to come to Him. He came to you. Like wherever Jesus is, that's the kingdom of God. Like the kingdom isn't like, up there in heaven somewhere. It's wherever the presence of Jesus is and the presence of Jesus is moving, that's the kingdom. And he says the kingdom has come and it's come near because he wants to invite you into a relationship. He wants to invite you into a relationship with him. And so he's, he's saying, listen, you've got a message that the world can belong, that, that they can come to me and they can know me in a personal way. But he said, you don't only just have a message, but watch now, you've got a ministry. You, you have a ministry to do. He says, listen, go out and heal the sick. Drive out demons. Help people that are oppressed. Go out there and, and do what you have been watching me do. He says, go out there and everything that you have watched, I want you to do for someone else. You've got the power and not only do you have the power, I now have given you the permission. So you got everything you need to go out there and do it. Like go on out there and, and be the hands and feet and the arms of Jesus to the lost and the broken. And people are like, listen, listen. Okay, okay, Kurt, listen. My faith's private. Like this is just between me and God. It's just, I just want it to be private. This is like a commitment between me and God. I don't think there's any such thing as private faith. I, I don't think there's any such thing. Listen, everywhere you're going to tour through the Gospels where Jesus said, follow me, he did it in the open and in the public. When he walked to Matthew in the tax collector booth, there was a crowd of people. He looked at Matthew and said, Matthew, leave that booth, come follow me. When he came to the disciples and they're washing their nets on the shore and, and, and they're fishing, he, there was a large crowd of people. He said right in front of them, if you want to follow me, come follow me. Out in the public, out in the open. Not all, oh, just say a little prayer, raise your hand, say a little prayer, fill out a card, text me later. Text me, text me. Keep it between yourself. Sneak out of here. Don't let anyone know. And listen, we're good, man. You're going to heaven. You're going to be good. Everything's, everything's good. No, that's not what he said. He said, leave everything. Come follow me. Like, you want to be a follower? Drop what you're doing. Drop your career. Drop your family. Drop all of that stuff and come follow me, which was radical, right? Some of those I read, and I'm like, Jesus, really? Like, come on, ease up a little. Like, walk them into it. No, no, that's not what Jesus did. And, and so Jesus is like, listen, listen, here's the deal. You want to be my follower. Here, here's what you need to know. And then Jesus goes, listen, I'm sending you out, but I want to tell you exactly what to expect. I love when Jesus does that, right? He doesn't, he doesn't throw a curveball to us. He goes, I'm sending you out, and when I send you out, here's what you can expect. Now, this is the gospel. This is the words of Jesus. These are my words, but they're the words of Jesus. And, and this is written in the first century to Jesus' disciples. Now listen, I understand that. And I understand that it's not in the Bible just for historical reference. I know who the conversation is between. And you could read this text and go, oh, well, that was just Jesus talking to his disciples. He's not talking to me. It's not there just for historical reference. It's there because it has implications for you and I in the 21st century. So listen, how cool is the Bible? The Bible's not old-fashioned. 
The, the Bible wasn't written in the first century just for first century. It was written in the first century, and it's still relevant in the 21st century. Only the Bible can do that. And so he says, here, I'm sending you out like sheaves among wolves. Now, when Jesus said that, they went, whoa, whoa. Uh-oh. I, like, if they were afraid, if they weren't afraid, they're afraid now, right? Like, I'm sending you out like a sheep among a wolf. You don't have to be brilliant to go. Those odds aren't good. That, that, that isn't good. Then Jesus kind of says something a little weird. He says, therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. He goes, listen, you're going to go out there and, and, you, and you, need to be wise. you need to be shrewd and wise like a snake. Now listen, everybody hates snakes, right? Everybody wants to kill a snake. You see a snake, the first thing you want to do is kill it. He goes, when you go out in the world, he goes, everyone's going to want to kill you. Everyone's not going to like you. But you know what a snake has the ability to do when it, when it feels like it's going to be attacked or killed? It can slither away real quick and get out of there. He said, you need to be wise. You need to know that there are situations that you're going to be involved in. You need to be shrewd and wise enough to know when to fight and when to slither away. And then he said, you need to be innocent like a dove. You ever see a dove? Okay, just real gentle. It's the symbol of peace. You're never going to see a movie, Attack of the Killer Doves. This is not going to happen. You don't see them flying down, swooping, trying to steal stuff from people. They're just peaceful. They're kind. They're innocent. They're just pure. He says, go out there. Don't be obnoxious. Don't be one of those Facebook followers that just rips apart everybody. Be innocent like a dove. Go out there and be a representation. Then watch what he says. Be on your guard because you're going to be handed over to the local councils. You're going to be flogged in the synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before the governors as kings and witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, not if they arrest you, when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. Okay, Jesus, thanks. That's great advice there, all right? Now watch what he says. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of the Father speaking through you. Now I would go, man, if I'm in that situation right there, I don't want to know what to say. I want to get out of jail card. That's what I want. But he says, don't, don't worry, okay? Watch what he says. He says, brother is going to be portrayed brother to death and father is ch child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Now he's trying to rally up his followers, right? He goes, when you go out, here's what you can expect. Then he turns to him and he says, so don't be afraid of them. The most noted command in all of Scripture is do not be afraid or do not fear. The number one command that Jesus gives throughout the Scriptures, more than any other. For there is nothing concealed that will be disclosed, nothing hidden that will be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet one of them will fall to the ground outside of your father's care. And even if the very hairs of your head are numbered, so do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. So here's what Jesus says. Not only as a follower are you to give freely, but he says you're now to go out and live fearlessly. Like when you go out in the world, you need to live fearlessly as a follower. Because here's what's going to happen. Like it's almost like Jesus is like in a halftime, like in the locker room. Could you imagine that speech? Okay, guys, you're all my followers. I'm sending you out. This is going to be awesome. Like, I, you're going to have a message and a ministry. You're going out to a broken world. Now, when you get out there, here's what's going to happen. You're going to get whipped. They're going, to drag you. they're going to drag you into the court, and they're going to sue you. You're, you're going to get out there, and you're going to be betrayed by your own family members. And you're going to get out there, and people are going to try to harm you physically, violently, try to harm you. And you're going to get out there and everyone is going to hate you because of me. You guys ready to go? 
You ready to be my follower? Like, like, do you think that there's a reason why when Jesus began to talk like this, people started to unfollow? Do you think there's a reason why large crowds never stayed long around Jesus? Because Jesus started saying, listen, listen, if you really want to be a follower of Jesus, let me tell you what that means. And here's what he was saying. You can expect opposition. Not, oh, you know what, maybe, maybe some bad things can happen. Maybe some, some turbulent things can happen. No, no, no. He says, you can expect opposition if you're going to be my follower. You still want to be my follower? You still with me? And then he says, here's, here's some levels of opposition. Notice what he says right there in the text. Rejection. He says, you're going to be rejected. Verse 14, he said, when you go into a town, if they don't welcome you or listen to you, Leave that home or town, shake the dust off your feet, click your heels like Dorothy and be on your way. So he goes, listen, you're going to go out there in the world, you're going to have a message in a ministry, you're going to be the hands and feet, and you're going to go to a world and they're going to go, listen, I don't want that. I didn't sign up for that. I don't want it. I don't care what you have. He goes, you're going to be rejected. Okay. So, so they don't want it. Then he says, listen, it's going to go to another level. There, there's going to be some hostility that's going to come your way. Not, not just hostility, maybe even some harm. Because he says in verse 17, be on your guard because you're going to be handed over to the local councils and you're going to be flogged in the synagogue. Flogged, okay, left a permanent mark on your body. Like if you're in the first century and you've been flogged, when you go to the beach and take your shirt off, everyone goes, oh, he's been flogged. Because they can see the marks on your back. He says, listen, you're going to go out in a world that wants to harm you. They, they're hostile. You still want to be my follower? And if that's not bad enough, he goes, you're also going to be betrayed. He said, brother is going to be betrayed brother. And father, his ch children are going to rebel against their parents and going to have them put to death. There were, there were kids in the first century that turned their own parents in for being followers of Jesus when persecution broke out in the book of Acts. He says, listen, your family's going to betray you. You ever been in a house where some love Jesus and some don't? Man, that's not easy. Man, that, it doesn't matter whether you're blood or not. He says, listen, there's going to be some tension there. They're, they're going to betray you. They're, they're not even going to value what you value. They're not going to care about what you're a part of. There's going to be all kinds of tension that is there. Do you still want to be my follower? Do you, do you understand? Jesus is talking to the 12 apostles. Listen to me, Bridgewood, listen. We know from history, 10 of them were martyred for their faith. Brutally. I'm talking about crucified, sawed in two. I'm not talking about lethal injection. Judas, we know, because he betrayed Jesus, felt so much shame and guilt, he took his own life. And only John, only John was exiled to the island of Patmos where he lived out the rest. And Patmos was really a slave labor camp is what it was. And lived out the rest of his life on a slave labor camp in Patmos. That's who he's talking to. Now that's first century, and we're in the 21st century. And you, and you say, Kurt, what are you saying? Here, here's what I'm saying. I'm saying I know the context of Matthew chapter 10 in the first century. I don't know what the context is of Matthew chapter 10 in the 21st century. There are things that if you would have said to me five years ago, do you think this could happen? I would have said, oh, pfft. they're happening. Things that you and I thought, could it really be that much hatred in the world? We're living in it right now. Do you realize how much fear is out there among followers of Jesus? That if someone knows that I'm a follower of Jesus, if someone knows that I'm associated with the gospel, I could lose my job, I could be canceled, it could keep me from the promotion, 
Man, I could be kicked off the campus or ridiculed or bullied on the campus. We're living in it right now. It's happening all around us. Oh, can you be dragged into a legal court? Listen, a few years ago, we joined together as a church and said, let's start a nonprofit. Man, we just want to help underprivileged kids in the cities. We want them to experience stuff that they'll never, ever experience. We bought a camp just miles from here, outside of the city limits, and we were just two years into it, and the neighbor said, no, 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 we're not for that. We don't care about your compassion. We don't care what you're doing. We don't care how much good you're doing. We don't want these kind in our neighborhood. And so we got dragged into the city council and told you can't do that anymore. Church, this is happening. And we've been asking this question, am I following? Am I a follower of Jesus? If Jesus sat you down and said, here's what the outcome of you following me is going to look like, and he said, here's what's going to happen to you at the end of your life, and and until the end, here's what's going to happen. Your family's going to hate you. You're going to be bullied at school. Uh, You're going to be a threat constantly of, of your career and all of that. I mean, he just like listed everything out to you and said, so, are you in? Are you with me? There's a reason people stopped following Jesus at this moment. There's a reason that people said, this isn't what I signed up for. But church, this is what Jesus said being a follower looks like. He said, I want you to go in the world and what you've received, I want you to freely give And when you go out there, I want you to live fearlessly. I don't want you to be afraid. You don't have to be ashamed. You've got to get out there. And there's no more hiding. Like It's going to force you to go public. It's going to force your opinion to come up. Yes, I am or no, I'm not. Even the disciples... Man, they weren't courageous in the moment, right? When all of a sudden the crisis hit, Peter's in the courtyard. I don't know him! Because why? Fear. Fear from a little girl that was calling him out in the public square, and he freaked out. He disowned Jesus. He walked with Jesus. He ate dinner with Jesus. He spent the evenings listening to Jesus at a campfire for three years, and in one minute, one minute of fear, just walked away from it. You want to be a follower of Jesus. This is what following Jesus means in our lives. You can be fearless. He says, listen to the words of Jesus. He said, do you you suppose I came to bring peace to the earth? I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. When you read that, listen to me. Let me be clear. Jesus is not advocating violence. That's not at all what he's saying. He says, do you realize that when I come, it's going to naturally bring division? That's what he's saying. Houses are going to be divided. Cities are going to be divided. Businesses are going to be divided all because of me. And he even says there, a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. It's going to cause division in your own home. And then he says, anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Here's what he says. He looks at his disciples, and he's thinking to myself, if your love for everything else around you is greater than it is for me, you're not going to follow me. You think you are, but you're not. You're going to sell out. You're going to give up. Because that's more important. He's not saying, listen, He's not saying ditch your family, hate your family, be a horrible parent. That's not what he's saying. He's he's saying is if your love for me is not supreme, if it's not first, 
you'll never be a follower of me. But, but we know that if we love Jesus supremely, he helps us to love everyone else around us supremely. That's how it works. And then he turns to me and says, listen, if you really want to find your life, you've got to lose it. You've got to die to yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. Here's where Jesus got right down to the, he got right down to the nitty gritty. And he said, listen, being a follower of Jesus isn't about you. And if you're not willing to die to yourself and your own desires, if you're not willing to die to the things in your own life for me, then you're not worthy to be my follower. I know that you won't even follow me. He uses a paradox, right? He uses a paradox all over Scripture. If you want to be first, you've got to be last. If you want to be great, you've got to be the least. This one, he says, if you want to find your life, you've got you to lose it. You've got to surrender. You've got to give it up to me. It's got to be the most important thing in your life. Are you following Jesus? Are you following Jesus? So why don't you stand with me? Thank you, Pastor Kurt, for that message today. You know, this series has been amazing. Uh, for me personally, it has taught me to follow deeper and closer, and my relationship with Christ is better because of it. So let me encourage you, if you've missed any one of these messages in this series, go back on our Facebook page, go back on our YouTube channel, and check those out because I believe that it is going to bring us closer to Christ in the end and help us to follow him better. You know, if you are walking this journey, you are not walking this journey alone. And we would love to come alongside of you in this journey we call faith and help you. There are multiple ways on the screen right now that you can get a hold of us. And all we want to do is come alongside of you in this journey of faith. Well, let me just say once again, thank you for joining with us today. If you have any questions or you need more information about what's going on around here, all you have to do is hop on bridgewoodchurch.com slash info, and it should be right there for you. Well, until next week, we love you and we'll be praying for you this week.